Well, I, I just think anybody that had a, a chance to either play for Skip uh, or coach with him just really understood what, what a genuine, sincere, um, you know, caring person that, that he was. You know, he was, he was amazing, you know, and, and you don't realize it, or I didn't realize it at the time as much that, um, you know, him being the head coach, you know, running an ACC program, winning ACC championships, um, he still never lost that, that common touch with anyone he came across. You know, he treated the guy that swept the floors in the gym the exact same way he treated the president of the university, with, with class, with dignity, I asked him how their day was going. And, you know, a lot of the same life lessons that, you know, I was fortunate enough to get taught by my mom and dad. But to see somebody in the role that Skip had um, really showed me that as you climb the ladder, so to speak, uh, that doesn't mean that you, that you act any differently or become different. That more than any of the X's and O's or any of the uh, other things that, that he taught me, I just saw that day to day. And it made me, as I got into this position, it made me want to be a better coach uh, and, a, and a better boss for the guys that work for me because uh, I always felt like a camaraderie with the coaching staffs that I was on with Skip. Um, and you always keep that connection. I always have that connection with Mark Schmidt, with Jeff Battle, with Dino Gaudio, with Pat Kelsey. Um, you know, I think it all, it all stemmed from Skip's approach. Uh, probably one I couldn't share. Um, but, uh, you know, I have a lot of great memories um, from Skip. He could be demanding in a way that wasn't demeaning. You know, I was this naive assistant coach. He had finally given me the opportunity to recruit underclassmen. And there was a kid that I probably didn't know about as well as I should have that ended up committing to an ACC school really, really early. And he sort of brought me in and in a very, very subtle way, you know, asked me what I thought about the top 50 kids in North Carolina and as freshmen and sophomores. And, you know, I, I sort of gave him a few names, but certainly not as many as I should have. And he said, you know, that sort of happened with, with the kid that just went to Clemson. And he said, let's, let's try not to have that happen again. And, man, it taught me a lesson. You know, I felt like I let him down versus walking out of the office, feeling like I got scolded, don't like working for this guy. Man, he's so hard to work for. I felt like I let him down. And he just had a way about him that brought out the best in you, but you really enjoyed working for him and with him. Yeah, I try to put myself in their shoes. And, you know, Skip died in 2007. <laughs> a lot of these guys didn't even watch him coach. You know, they were in junior high. And, you know, for me to just go out there and let's play the game and, and – Obviously, it's very personal to me because I, I coached under Skip. I played for him. He was an assistant coach. You know, I watched his teams. Uh, but that doesn't mean anything to Quentin. And I just wanted those guys to understand, number one, why we play the series, uh, who Skip Prosser was, what he stood for. Um, and I, I tried to do that as, as best I could. And you know, it still comes down to being able to concentrate on what Wake Forest brings to the table. But um, I think giving them a good perspective on who Skip was was, was important. And that's why I did it yesterday. In not, with, not necessarily with the two teams, because we don't have the same familiarity uh, between coaching staffs. Probably a good thing, uh, because when Dino was on the other sideline, you know, Jeff Battle was over there, it just felt a little bit awkward. Um, you know, it's why you don't play friends a lot of times in this business. And Danny's a good friend. I mean, I've gotten to know him through Nike trips and have the utmost respect for, for what he did as a player and what he's doing as a coach. Uh, but there's still not that same familiarity. None of my coaching staff really, really knows um, the coaching staff members on Wake's um, staff. So uh, from that standpoint, it's probably a little bit better. There won't be anything that we do special before the game other than shake hands. It's not very special. Yeah, absolutely. And the good thing is Wake Forest is dealing with it too. You know, and, and Having been in those offices, I know how challenging uh, Wake Forest exam schedule is, and uh, it's a very difficult school to get into and to stay into. So um, their kids were doing the exact same thing. So there'll be no excuses tomorrow if, if we don't play well or Wake doesn't play well. Oh, it's exam week, it's exam week for both teams. So uh, we tried to give our guys a couple days off um, when we could. 
the same time get their wind when they were practicing to, so that we can be our best tomorrow. He's really improved. He, he might be one of the most improved players in, in college basketball. I mean, he's getting you know, 20 points, 10 rebounds, um, does a little bit of everything. You know, he doesn't necessarily just score it uh, in the low post, which he's very capable of doing it, but he can step out to 15 feet, uh, jab his defender off, and you know, shoot the ball facing the basket. Um, really good athlete. They throw lobs to him. He gets his own on the, on the glass as well. So uh, he's a challenge. Much different player than he was a year ago. You could see it coming, but again, that big jump that kids make from their freshman to sophomore year, he's made it. And so we're, we're going to have to be on our toes and, and guard him as a team tomorrow. Uh, well, I, I like our winning percentage at home, but it doesn't make the next game any easier. Uh, the nice thing is without classes going on uh, over the next two to three weeks, um, besides the Christmas break where the guys will go home, uh, we can get in the gym individually with our players. You know, we can get more shots up. Um, we can focus uh, only 100% on basketball. That's a, that's a good thing, you know, as long as you don't saturate your guys too much. And um, I'm looking forward to it. A little bit of both. I mean, they have a much improved shooting team. You know, they got the kid Arians, who was not on their team a year ago. Uh, Woods wasn't on their team a year ago. Those guys are high level shot makers. Childress is a freshman that can shoot the ball. so. You know, all of a sudden, it's like they don't just have a couple guys out there. They have five or six guys coming in off the bench. Uh, so uh, they put a lot of pressure on you because of their bigs. Um, those guys rebound the ball well. They try to get you stretched out and eventually, you know, drive in the lane, get fouled. And, you know, good shooters from the three-point line are generally good shooters from the free throw line as well. So uh, big challenge. Yeah. Yeah, it's slowing down. Um, but he's still going to be inconsistent. I mean, it's just the mark of a lot of freshmen around the country. And, um, you know, the nice thing is for Quentin's sake, he's able to play uh, extended minutes um, because we need him to be out there at times to give our other guys a break. And I'm hoping that he can use that experience to continue to get better and better. Um, you know, he, he's very advanced on the defensive end. It's an offensive end that's been a little bit of a challenge, a little bit more of a roller coaster for him. Um, but again, the, the, the more he gets opportunities, I think the more he'll get used to those situations. And we just got to hold him accountable. To, making better decisions out there. Yeah. I was really surprised. I mean, both Quentin and Tyreek have college-ready bodies, but that doesn't necessarily equate to their, their mind seeing things develop on the floor, especially defensively. Most kids in high school, um, you know, their high school coach said, you know, don't foul. So they didn't play any defense. And, you know, Quentin, let's face it, he comes from a rural, um, you know, town in, in, in Kentucky. And he wasn't playing great, great competition. And so he wasn't necessarily you know, individually challenged on the defensive end. For him to you know, be the defender that he is already, I, I can only imagine what he's going to be like after he gains even more experience. But you know, the offensive part, uh, he needs to be a little bit more assertive and a little bit more aggressive and a little bit more um, confident in himself, especially running the team. Um, honestly, I don't, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's not necessarily benefiting. It's, it's more the Karen Carnes Foundation, and we're sort of giving a helping hand to pay for their expenses. Um, you know, the, the Karen Carnes Foundation, if you don't know, uh, is a foundation uh, that was founded when she passed away several years ago of cancer, uh, left a young family. And this foundation now, when uh, a family loses a parent, you know, tragic car accident, cancer, you name it, uh, the foundation steps in and pays for the private school education all the way through high school. And they've done that to so many families uh, throughout greater Cincinnati. And Tom Carnes lost his wife and started the foundation. It's an awesome, awesome um, foundation. They uh, tie one game a year. And this is the game that um, you know, they're, they're doing a benefit. And so we're happy to help pay for their expenses. Man, that's a close one. You know, Brad is, is the best shooter I've ever been around. Period. But he's shooting threes, and Willie Cunningham is, is absolutely no slouch. And uh, he'll be anxious to tell you how he's no slouch either from the free throw line. But I love to put pressure on Bill Cunningham. You know, sometimes he thinks he's a little bit better than he is. So I'm going to go with Redford. Um, I do all my Christmas shopping online. Um, and so it takes about an hour for me. I generally understand what, what Christy wants. She does all the kids' uh, Christmas shopping. Although I got one gift I'm proud of uh, to, for the girls to split. I don't want to get the um, let the cat out of the bag yet. It's not Christmas. But um, my wife asked today if I was done with Christmas shopping for her. 
And I said, well, I might get a couple other things. And she said, well, I bought a few things for myself. So if you want to wrap them and put them under the tree. And so um, I think that's what a lot of husbands deal with out there. So that's what I'm dealing with. Uh, definitely more for a game. Yeah, she's, um, she's very appreciative of whatever I get her. So thank you.